And joining us today in our Book Talk segment, great to welcome a man who has written a book that is uh, getting a lot of great uh, notoriety in the press. It's called Behind the Curtain, an insider's view of Jay Leno's Tonight Show, and he's a man who should know about it. He was a producer of the show for, uh, I believe, 18 years. We're going to find out all about it. Uh, Dave Berg joined us by telephone today from out in uh, California. And uh, uh, Dave, uh, good to have a chance to talk with you. I, I read through the book. Uh, 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 the only thing I could say bad about it, it was over too early. I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, I'm very flattered. Thanks, Doug. Always been a, a fan of uh, kind of the behind the scenes of, uh, of television, particularly the late night shows. I remember when, uh, I think a long time ago, I forget the year, but uh, one of the early producers of Johnny Carson wrote a book, uh, maybe it was the late 70s or something like that. I was fascinated by that. Of course, the Bill Carter books as well. But you really capture uh, what it was like working with Jay for 18 years. It must have been kind of difficult to kind of whittle it down just to, to fit it into a book. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's almost like you can never put it to sleep. As I'm reading through the book, I go, oh, I could have told that story better. And, gee, why didn't I add this story? So many great stories, and uh, you, you have some great highlights in the book. I guess the first question I want to ask you, when you were in charge of booking, uh, if not all the guests, at least most of the major ones, uh, uh, difficult job, I imagine. You, you tell some great stories in the book about uh, dealing with different personalities, but uh, that's a tough job, isn't it? Well, Yes and no. You know, I think my plumber has a, a, a difficult job sometimes. <laughs> uh, my uh, contractor that comes in and puts on a, pa a patio cover. You know, we all have we all have our crosses to bear. But yeah, I did have um, I did have uh, a strenuous days, but it was a, it was also a pleasure and an honor to be there. Now, you came from really more of the world of politics, right? And and uh, I know you worked with Bill O'Reilly and and. We're covering news for a long time. I guess he wanted somebody with kind of a political background uh, to be part of the show. Is that, that how you got the gig originally? That's how I got it. I had been in uh, local news. I had been in radio, television, and I ended up at NBC Network News in Burbank. And when the, the opening happened, I, and as often happens to all of us in the business, I got fired. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, right? Yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> yep, and uh, and I noticed that right down the hallway from me at NBC it was the uh, Tonight Show with Jay Leno was just moving in, and uh, I told my wife about it on the phone, and she said, well, go down there. What are you talking about? Get down there right now and apply. And I said, uh, you know, what do I know about entertainment? So I, I, I went down, and I, I almost went in. This is how you shouldn't get a job. I said, hi, I'm a news guy. I'm sure you don't want somebody like me, but <laughs> can I apply? I mean, that was really <laughs> I could have taken a more positive approach. <laughs> However, they were looking for a news person. And so I get I looked out. And, and he obviously throughout his monologues over the years. And Johnny Carson did did some political jokes, but he really wasn't known as doing a lot of political humor. Occasionally he did some, but Jay would incorporate more of that. So uh, uh, he, he kind of brought you in from from reading the book uh, to give that kind of perspective. Get some good guests on there as well that would have both sides of the argument, right? And both uh, the left and the right kind of represented. That's right, and I, and I have to go back. You mentioned Johnny Carson, but I have to go back and tip my hat to him because Johnny established the pattern for being an equal opportunity abuser when it comes <laughs> to the model. You just go after whoever's in power, whether it's the Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, liberals, and that was the tradition Johnny started, and that was the tradition that Jay honored. He just, I believe, I believe he brought it to the next level. He added, I think, far more political humor. We added political guests. Uh, Johnny's guests were mostly from the world of entertainment. He had a few political guests, but, you know, Jay's monologue uh, ended up being ab about 14 minutes. Johnny's was seven. Yeah, Jay would uh, do the longer monologues, and like you said, he would uh, do you know, more than the, the peremptory uh, political joke. He would do a three or four on, on a topic, and and, but you never really got the impression, at least I never did, of what Jay Leno's political beliefs were. Johnny Carson, you can never tell. I don't think most audience members could tell what Jay's political beliefs were either. He, he, he hit both sides, fairly, and but with humor. Exactly. And those of us at the show, many I know Jay's political views, mm -hmm. um, because we've discussed them, but you really couldn't tell. And it doesn't matter what a person's political views are, as long as they're even-handed. Talk a little bit about uh, when you decided to do this book. Did, did, uh, did, uh, Jay wrote the forward, so I'm sure he gave you, no, he gave you the blessing, but was that uh, after some convincing, or did he say, hey, let's go do it? 
No, I, uh, I'll tell you, I, I did have to convince him a little bit because his big concern when I asked him to write the forward is he didn't want me to just write um, just a, a sappy book, just uh-huh. saying how great he is. And he was very concerned about, you know, putting, putting his name on something that would, that would be like that. So, uh, yeah, it did take a little bit of convincing. And he ended up, you know, saying that actually he and I often had disagreements, you know, within the show. Um, and that he, he actually had a lot of fun disagreeing with me. <laughs> so, yeah, I took a little bit of, uh, took a little bit of convincing on my part, yeah. Talk a little bit about the, the the structure of the Tonight Show. I think more people now maybe a little more uh, uh, savvy about how shows are put together, but not really unless you've been there to see how it is done. But uh, it is kind of like making sausage. I think you might have made that analogy in the book as well. It's, it's not always pretty, right? <laughs> it, it's you know, it's not always pretty. That is true. Um, most of the time, it, it goes pretty smoothly. I mean, I was actually surprised at, at how professional most of the guests were. They would come in, uh, they would, you know, hang out uh, with Jay in the dressing room, uh, they would make their appearance, and they would go home. But sometimes it could get tense. I mean, after all, there was a lot at stake, an awful lot. People were promoting multi-million dollar films. And when you come on The Tonight Show, you know, you're not just there to promote your film. You have to perform. You have to do a good job. So there was a lot of tension involved. Yeah, one of the things that uh, if you were a Tonight Show watcher, I grew up watching it, picking up Johnny, I guess maybe mid-70s when I first started to see it, but you watch old clips of it, and you know there's some great classic moments of people coming on. Uh, obviously, a lot of people came on to plug things, but you had to provide entertainment and, and the great stories and, and, and that kind of thing, so you got to prep, prep guests to do that, and that, that gets harder as, uh, as, as time goes on, doesn't it? Find guests that are both interesting and, and, and funny. Yes, and absolutely. I mean, going back to Johnny, because... You know, let's face it, we all acknowledge, including Jay, all of us acknowledge that Johnny set the gold standard. Um, And we're all just trying to live up to his legend. (laughs) But the fact is, if you were on Johnny's show, if you were a comedian, even if you were just an actor telling funny stories, if you didn't do a good job, you didn't come back. And uh, I heard this from, I mean, obviously people were grateful when when they got to appear on Johnny, but when you talk to you talk to people privately, they talked about how stressful it was to, to uh, appear on that couch uh, next to him. Now we didn't have the same luxury that Johnny did. He was also the only show in town, right? So if it didn't work out on Johnny, he didn't have any place else to go. Basically, <laughs> now by the time we got in the business, we had some competition. And you talk about stand-up comedians. Of course, Jay got his uh, stand-up start in television with uh, uh, Johnny. Uh, I guess what mid '70s was his first shot on there. I think Jay always kind of tried to carry that that tradition a little bit, having comedians on. Maybe not quite as much. None of the shows do it as much as they do. But uh, I think he appreciated that, didn't he? Having a new stand-up come on and do well. Oh, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, the, the reality is um, there, there seemed to be a story and a bit of a reputation that. We weren't uh, we weren't uh, favoring uh, comedians as much. Actually, the the opposite was true because if you think about it from a producer's point of view, when a comedian comes on, they have worked on their material. You know, chances are they're going to be really good, and and they they've they've uh, you know studied and honed and, and worked on that material. We actually went out of our way to hire two producers who had been um, managers of comedians. Their name was, uh, their name was Bob and Ross. Uh-huh. And they, they played the judges on the last comic standing. Okay. Uh, and so they, it was specifically their job to go out to clubs and look for new talent. Yeah, you know you have that five or six minutes that uh, has been polished. So that at least that's one segment you know that, that is pretty sure to go well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Some great moments uh, on The Tonight Show going back to the original days, and, and Jay had his uh, share of great moments as well. And uh, reading through the book reminded me of a few. Uh, I think one that uh, kind of stood out for me, I've always been a fan of, uh, of Angie Harmon, and uh, she got proposed uh, uh, by marriage by Jason Seahorn. So that, that was a great moment. That was, I have to say, one of my favorite moments. And one of the reasons I liked it is because... Spontaneity is 
Spontaneity is fairly common in your business, in the radio business. In television, we're not so good, all of us in television. You have to worry about camera shots and angles. And it, it's, a little, it's a little bit of a tighter ship. But the uh, the uh, situation with Angie Harmon, when uh, when Jason Seahorn, the, the great uh, NFL player, came out and proposed to her on the show, she had no idea that it was coming. We had planned it all ahead of time. And in fact, when Jay was interviewing her, he was asking her questions about her boyfriend, uh, Jason Seahorn, and she was getting irritated because <laughs> she's thinking... What, what, you know, Jay, I didn't come here. To, I don't talk about my personal life. And he said, yeah, but really, what if Jason wanted you to talk about your personal life? And she was actually getting annoyed and irritated. <laughs> and uh, Elton John was, uh, was also uh, sitting there. He was at the, at the panel next to Angie. And, uh, and he made some remark. He said, oh, Jason wants to come out? Really? That's interesting. <laughs> anyway, different finally, meaning. Jason... Different meaning to that yeah. term. <laughs> different meaning, but it was funny. Jason comes out, does the proposal, and she was absolutely floored. And again, true spontaneity. Yeah, it, it did look real. I mean, uh, I, I thought it was. It and, was. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, great, great, great moment. And, uh, of course, everybody remembers the Hugh Grant uh, uh, interview. I'm sure you've been asked about that many times. But uh, that, that really kind of propelled uh, Jay Leno to the top of the ratings, that, that one show, didn't it, in his early uh, years of the, tonight, of the Tonight Show hosting it? Yeah, I, I can't talk enough about the, the Hugh Grant segment because that was truly the major turning point. And there are so many aspects to that story. Um, first of all, when uh, Hugh came on the, on the show, he was booked for uh, July 10th, uh, 1995. Um, he had already been booked on the show prior to the incident that he went through. And of course, he, uh, he was caught with a, a, you know, a Hollywood uh, hooker named Divine Brown right. in his car. Uh, and it had a long-time relationship with the beautiful Elizabeth Hurley. So he had already been booked on this show, and he was, he was there to promote his first major Hollywood film, Nine Months. So it was in his best interest to, you know, keep that booking. This, this film was crucial. But he started to get cold feet just before the show. And so, of course, you know, we went out of our way to assure him that, look, this is in your best interest. You, you should come clean. You should apologize. Um, and he eventually agreed. He stayed in and did the show. And Jay had promised him, and I think this is really important, he promised Hugh that he wasn't going to make it into a tawdry sec uh, segment. He could have had Hugh come on, and he could have said, okay, give me the details. When did Divine Brown get in your car? <laughs> what did she do? With, you know, he could have done that, but he said... He said, um, what the hell were you thinking? And that's all he had to say. That's it. He didn't go into any more details. Everyone knew what he was talking about. After that segment, we went, we, the ratings went through the ceiling. We had been rated the number two behind Letterman for two years. But after that night, we shot up to number one and stayed in that position for almost two decades. Yeah. I was surprised. I remember that uh, show. I, I was surprised that he actually came on. You got to give him credit. I mean, uh, to, to do that, but uh, but it, it made for a memorable television. Like you said, it wasn't. Uh, Jay could have made it uh, like TMZ ish today, and, and he didn't. I give Jay credit for that. You know, he had fun yeah, with it, but it wasn't. Uh, it didn't make you cringe too much, <laughs> if at all. <laughs> it didn't, and I give Hugh Grant credit for actually doing a real mea culpa. He didn't say, "I'm sorry if I've offended anyone." Right. That I've done something wrong. You know when you've done something wrong. Up until that time, celebrities, if they did something naughty, they kind of disappeared. This really set a, a new precedent for the modern day uh, mea culpa. Yeah. Well, I was surprised too. I, I knew Jay uh, didn't like to take a day off, but I didn't realize that you, you do a show count. He's actually did more shows, tonight shows, than Johnny did, which, which surprised yeah. me. That, that was fascinating. He actually did. He, he never took vacations, and he, uh, we took far more uh, weeks off, or we called them hiatus weeks, than, uh, than Letterman did. 
Yeah, Dave, so, Dave, yeah, Dave, had, Dave had Johnny's schedule. <laughs> What's that? I said Dave had Johnny's schedule. <laughs> yes, he did. And, and Jay did a show five days a week. I think Johnny, again, Johnny was a great legend, so, uh, you know, not criticizing him, but he was sort of down to, uh, you know, three shows a week. Right. Toward the end there, yeah. But uh, 18 years, and very rare that a show uh, host uh, goes out on top of the ratings. I mean, I think a lot of people uh, probably would not, not take anything away from Jimmy Fallon, but Jay was still at the top of the ratings. Very rare to see that. Johnny did it uh, after 30 years, but I think Jay probably could have gone another three or four or five years uh, at the top of the game. But that's just the way the business works, right? Nope, but I have to say I agree with you, and I was really disappointed when they, when they let Jay go. Uh, you know, the second time. But uh, but you're right. He went out on top. Now, were you involved at all with the uh, the 10 o'clock show? Yes. You, you did uh, that? I, I, yes, I, I uh, stayed for that show, and then, then I, I continued to help relaunch the uh, Tonight Show, the second version of it. Yeah, I didn't know if you had worked yeah, on that, that and came back, or were on Elsewhere and yeah. came back, so you did work. Now, I didn't think that was a bad show. It just was went against the grain of what television had been, I guess. Maybe if it stayed on longer, it might have might have kicked in. I mean, it worked out well for Jay anyway, but uh, that, that, that was kind of a tough tough task to go five nights a week, ten o'clock. Yeah, and I, I think you're very kind to say that you know it wasn't a bad show. And the, 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 thank you for that, Doug. No, it wasn't. No, I uh, it, was, that, yeah. it was. The reality is, we actually hit the target numbers that NBC had set for us. We actually brought in the numbers that that they had asked us to do. It's just that for the affiliates, the NBC affiliates, it wasn't enough numbers for them. Now, why NBC hadn't consulted with the affiliates about this, I'm not sure about that. But the affiliates were complaining that we weren't bringing in enough numbers to, to lead into their local uh, late newscast. Right. And that's what did us in. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's the uh, the driver behind uh, network shows, particularly uh, in prime time. How much you bring into the local affiliate newscast, but uh, but anyway, he came back to the to the late show, the Tonight Show, and and picked up right where he left off. Oh, I don't think there was any low at all in the rating. I think he went right back to number one, didn't he? Within a week or two. It was it, it was almost miraculous to to do what he did. He he came right back and brought the numbers. Uh, you know, Conan. Um, had hemorrhaged about 50% of right. the, the viewership. Yeah. And Jay brought the numbers right back within a few weeks. Now, that was a whole big thing with him and Conan, and it's been well documented. I, I guess just from your perspective, Dave, uh, do you think Jay was kind of given a raw deal on that? I never thought it was, was Jay taking anything away from Conan. Conan, it didn't work out for him, and, and, and Jay was there to, to go back to uh, the number one spot. I thought he did, uh, did it the right way. I don't think he handled it poorly at all, but... I don't know what you thought. No, um, and I thought that the uh, I thought it was terrible the way many in the media portrayed J uh, Jay as basically bigfooting uh, Conan and taking away Conan's job, when in fact Conan just did not have what it took to appeal to a mainstream audience. He just didn't. And there's a reason that NBC let him go. Now, they offered him the opportunity to stay on and continue to do The Tonight Show for a full hour at 12 midnight, and Jay the opportunity to do a, a half-hour show at 11.30, but Conan turned them down. Yeah, yeah that would have been, uh, would have been interesting. I, I, I don't think... Yeah. Uh, I don't think that would have lasted either. I think uh, that first half hour with Jay, they probably would have said, "Well, let's do another half hour. <laughs> why, why, why leave at noon at midnight after that?" But uh, that's my feeling. But they gave Conan every opportunity. Yeah, no, uh, and nothing, I don't take away from Conan either. I thought he did a decent job on the the later show, but he he was not an eleven thirty type of show. It just at least my opinion, anyway. But. Uh, but anyway, this book is filled with great stories. We've just touched on a couple of them now with uh, Dave Berg, uh, Behind the Curtain, an insider's view of Jay Leno's uh, Tonight Show, just put out by uh, Pelican uh, Publishing. And uh, uh, Dave, uh, I know you've been getting a, a lot of great press on it. you have a, a website you want to direct people to? Well, that's very kind of you. It's, uh, my website is uh, getbehindthecurtain.com. And I'm, uh, you know, tonight, at Tonight Show Dave is my, uh, uh, you know, Twitter. Great. What, 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 do you, what do you got going now? you have any projects in the works, or other than the book, I mean? <laughs> well, uh, right now, you know, the book is actually coming out in two days, so right now, that's my main project. Sure. But uh, in my, you know, regular workaday life, I, I tend to, uh, I write uh, jokes for, for a lot of people in the political world, help them with speeches, write speeches, that sort of thing. 
A lot of the politicians need help with jokes, so keep doing that. <laughs> Dave, pleasure talking to you. I know it's a busy schedule, but appreciate that, and uh, love to have you on again down the road. But uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Doctor.